Okay. Hi, Renee. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Doing okay. So today, this is another member spotlight. I'm using member because today we're going to actually meet Denae Thorpe, who so many of you email and know about her email address. And maybe have met at an event, but this is a way for you to get to know the clergy administrative assistant a little better. I know her fairly well. It's, uh, she literally can hear all of your complaints coming through the phone uh, into her room next to next to me. So, Danae, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I also get called Dana a lot. So, um, uh, just so you know, it's Danae. Uh, just if people get confused, I understand. <laughs> My sister's name is Dana, so it, it's always weird for me when I hear Dana. I said, my sister's here. Um, Danae uh, is at her apartment. I'm in my office, obviously, with the books. And I am, I'm not dressed for this one appropriately. I am sporting a uh, first wrestling shirt. This is the Flip Brothers. And the reason I'm doing that is where they just announced the cancellation of their big show. So if anyone's been to one of our synagogue wrestling events, I'm going to promote them right now because Danae loved wrestling. I know that she did. Um, so anyone who wants to support them, please go ahead and go on to ProWrestlingTees.com. They've got all sorts of wrestling shirts and you can support uh, the wrestling that we've had at the synagogue. But that's not why we're here today. We're here to talk about Danae. Danae, let's talk a little bit about your background. Where are you from and what brought you sort of to the Temple of Aaron? Uh, yeah, so I am originally from Bismarck, North Dakota. Yes, you heard the North Dakota accent when I said that. <laughs> Um, I grew up there till I was I graduated high school and then I decided I needed to move as soon as possible. So I moved to Fargo, Moorhead area to go to school. Um, I went there for graphic design and uh, as soon as I graduated there, I moved down to the cities um, with no job prospects at all. I just t told myself I gotta move down here or else I won't. Um, so I actually did three part-time jobs till I moved, uh, till I joined, um, the team at Temple of Aaron. Um, and yeah, I, the funny thing is like, I wasn't around Judaism, um, growing up because I'm from Bismarck. Um, I mean, obviously I knew about Judaism and everything, but there were no, I don't think there is any synagogues there. Um, so, pardon? I'm going to start one in Bismarck, North Dakota. I'm kidding. <laughs> that would be great, just to see, like, an actual synagogue. I knew that uh, the biggest I saw that wasn't Christianity was the Mormon temple. It was huge in uh, Bismarck, and... Um, that was the closest thing that was outside of Judaism. I mean, out, outside of Christianity for small Bismarck. Um, and it's so interesting to me because our form of transportation then was, you know, everybody had a car um, driving everywhere. Here, you know, there's all different forms of transportation. I don't think we had uh, the public bus system until um, after I graduated high school. In business. Your parents owned uh, like a uh, haircut salon, right? Yeah. So they met in hair school. My dad wanted to be a barber, but it was the 80s. And during that time, cosmetology was more significant than being a barber. So he decided he wanted to go, um, go to hair school. And that's how he met my mom. I always joke that they met at Love at First Haircut. Um, and so they um, moved to Bismarck after they got married and they moved there to own a couple hair salons. And they still have two. They sold one um, a few years ago, um, but they still have it going right now. Um, and um, my dad also used to rep hockey uh, in Bismarck, and I grew up um, every now and then while he was repping hockey, I would be in the penalty box doing my homework, um, which was also where the announcer was. 
So I would have angry kids on this side of me and another angry kid on this side of me after they would get in a scuffle. And, um, you know, I hear the announcer yell at them to knock it off because they're yelling at each other back and forth. <laughs> so, oh, I mean, yeah. So, Janae, what's one of the best parts or the best part of working at Temple of Aaron? What's something that you enjoy about your job? Um, I like uh, that there's a sense of community um, is one of my favorite parts because everybody knows each other. Um, I mean, we have a small staff. It's great because we all are kind of close and we know what's going on with everybody in the standpoint where we know, you know, hey, that person still needs their coffee for the morning. <laughs> Maybe you should wait to talk to them. <laughs> Um, and then um, my favorite part is like working the events because no event is diff the same. Every event is different. Um, I get people coming up to me um, telling me that you guys are doing a great job with these events. And um, a, a couple of times it made me tear up because I was just so happy to be able to be on the team that makes these events possible. Yeah. So what, what's been the most fun program so far? So far, I, I do enjoy the um, block parties. Um, and then um, you and I tend to work on the uh, kosher fast together. And that's always fun because we're trying to find different things all the time for that. Um, and I just love working those events and doing logistics behind the scenes that nobody sees. Um, and then of course I enjoy the fundraisers, but I'm not like as prominently working on those as much as people think. Yeah, I think the, 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 the kosher fest is such a, they're also different working behind the scenes. Kosher fest is in, in many ways the hardest one because <laughs> You know, the block party, you sort of show up, your, whatever the vendor is, and does what they do. And right. with Kosher Fest, we need to do what they do, but in, in the vein of what we're doing, which is complicated to explain and to get people to sign on. And, uh, you know, switching venues, and when there was a blizzard, the last one, that was crazy. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, us running back and forth in all of our little cars grabbing everything yeah. we can, making sure we have everything there before the event and praying that we didn't get stuck in the blizzard yeah. <laughs> was just crazy, but we pulled it off. It was great. Yeah, I think afterwards, I always, I know these are fun, but the one I crash after the most is Kosher Fest. Oh, I... I crashed. I uh, I didn't get home till really late, and as soon as I got home, I'm I'm like, well, not coming into the office till later that day because it was just so insane. But it was great, and I actually think we closed down the office the next day because of the blizzard. <laughs> so I got to sleep in. Um, okay, so I wanted to, one question I told you I was going to ask you was. Uh, What's the most unique Jewish thing that you've learned from working here? It could be a word, it could be a phrase, it could be a ritual, it could be a quirk of Rabbi Fon, but what is, uh, what's something uniquely Jewish? Obviously, you didn't have a huge Jewish background before this, no. but not So what is, is it, is it, uh, what, what is it that's uniquely Jewish that you have thought was funny or unique or just something that you've gravitated to? I love the Yiddish that we, uh, all of a sudden randomly say. Uh, my parents and my family, uh, they've noticed that I've definitely um, used Yiddish <laughs> every now and then. Um, uh, I think I said oy vey one time, and they're just like, you're definitely working in the synagogue for a long time. And then um, I've used mensch before. Uh, <laughs> he's a mensch, <laughs> stuff like that. Those are good words. I think they use, I was just listening to a show, like a TV show this morning, and they used the word mazel tov, like just as a, like a, like instead of saying the word congratulations, they said mazel tov, and the guy wasn't Jewish, no one on the yeah. panel was Jewish, 
And so, like, you know, some of these words, like, they find their way into common uh, language. Oh, I mean, I use Mazel Tov all the time now. And then uh, Shana Tova. I never thought I would be saying that. And here I am saying that uh, every uh, high holiday. And uh, even sometimes at the, like, later on, I'm saying Shana Tova. So, um it makes me laugh that all of a sudden I'm saying that sometimes I get a little awkward when I'm saying it because I'm nervous I'm gonna um mess it up <laughs> um and yeah I don't know it's just insane how much my life has changed since working here uh you know four years it was four years in April and it's been a blast well you know I love having you here and enjoy having you here and I um, our, our promotions never look better, and we work seamlessly together, and that's what I've always enjoyed. So thank you for your time. I'm glad the community got to know you a little better. Hopefully they'll watch this, and uh, and hopefully people will stop calling you Dana. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with it. I'm used to it. Um, it's as long as it's not um, Donnie or something else. It's okay. <laughs> um, I've heard everything. I've heard all the versions of my name, so I'm used to it by now. But when I was younger, it was a little bit of a struggle. Um, I actually had a gym teacher that <laughs> kept on saying my name wrong, so I stopped dead center. And, and while we, I was running and turned around and yelled, it's Danae! And uh, <laughs> yeah, he didn't care. He's like, you're done running right now. <laughs> All right, thank you, Danae. Have a great afternoon. And you too. I'll see you soon. Uh, bye bye. Bye.